I'm going to show you how I make a hand-built uh, sort of flat vase. Not quite sure how to describe it. Two-sided vase. Anyway, it started off a few years ago um, where I made these boxes, these cute little boxes. Isn't that fun? And I had created a template for them to cut out the sides of the box. And here's the template. This was actually for a bigger box, but the same idea. And I was looking at the template recently and I thought I kind of want to make some vases with it. And I, I came up with this idea of making a three-sided vase, which is cool. But then I was thinking it might be fun to make a two-sided vase. So using um, a template I created for the top half and for the bottom half, I came up with this two-sided vase, Oops. which is what I'm going to show you today. Here we go. They're kind of fun to make. I really like it. Anyway, so I'm going to start off by texturing my slab. I have here a, a rolling ball, a ball, a texture ball. Um, I can't remember who it's from. Well, anyway, and I think I used it with porcelain last, so I have a feeling some of the porcelain is going to come onto here, but that's okay. You just roll it around and I'm going to use this for the bottom half of the um, of the box and I like what this little corner does it makes like a little I mean that corner the the section where everything comes together so so let me see if this is enough well, maybe we need just a tiny bit more okay All right, so I take my template, and you gotta um, pay attention that you, uh, in this particular case, the design doesn't really matter if it's on the, t which direction it's going in, so it doesn't really matter where you put it, but you pick a spot, and in, with these vases, the narrow side is the bottom, and the wide side is the top. So I'm gonna cut out two sides, just I'm gonna mark it. Okay. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to mark this. You can use a pin tool or anything you have that's pointy. I mean, you could probably even use a pen to do this. So now I have that's the first side. Okay, and here's the second one. Okay. And then I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut it. And it, the little, the, you know, lines that are kind of halfway down the mark make it easy to, to like make a path for your knife to follow. Whoops. And there we go. I went out of the path. Stay in your lane. So the way I kind of came up with this idea is you kind of have to play around with the template to get a, a, a shape that you like, but I wanted a four-sided uh, piece that had uh, a wide middle and narrow bottom and a narrow top, and I came up with this shape. And again, I did it in a couple of sizes. So let's get rid of this extra. Okay, so now we have our bottoms. And you're thinking, well, if I put that together, it'd be kind of flat. So wait till you see what we do with this. But let's make our tops. So for the tops, I've got this little roller. And I'm going to make some texture with that. Let's get this into... Here, I'll put this here. And I don't need this whole slab. I'm going to need a little bit for the bottom. So I'm just going to cut this off the base of the um, piece and make sure I have enough here and I do so I'm going to just roll take my little rolling pin and I don't need the lines to be all that exact though I didn't really go in hard enough with that side so let me get that Okay, that's kind of fun. It's not exact. Um, and then I'm going to cut out my two pieces, same way. Okay. 
So when I do these templates, I start off with a paper template. And when I find something that I like, then I will transfer it to this craft foam so I have a more permanent template. Um, I know some people use tar paper, anything, you know, uh, anything that would hold its form even if it got wet makes a good template. Okay, I'm going to cut these out. Whoops, again, I went over the edge a little bit. That's okay. Oh, maybe we'll use this middle section for the bottom. Then we get some interesting texture on the bottom. That would be fun. side. I'm going to save this to see if I want to use it later. Oh, and I think I'm going to use this curve because I want to have a little bit of a curve to the top of the piece and I'm going to use this to make it. Um, the uh, primary thing is you got to make sure that you match up your top and your bottom because these templates are set up so that, um, oops, which way am I going? So that one side will fit over the other side. Whoops, I guess it's this way. Right, the wide side. So this one, on the this top one, the width of this is slightly bigger than the, than the width of this part. Wow, that's so weird. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I couldn't see it from that angle. And so it'll fit over when I overlap them. It'll fit over it. So you want to make sure that you match them up correctly in the cut pieces also. So we have this one and this one and like this and that's important for when we cut cut them up so that gives you an idea of what it's going to look like so I'm going to create that little curve first here so these pieces are a little soft but um, no no maybe that's not quite right well we'll worry about the curve later sorry <laughs> okay so I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to just smooth the edges on either on all four sides of the piece and then flip it over. Okay. So if you've watched my video on how I put together like uh, little cups and I cut I use a cutting tool, this tool by Zim, or Sim, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, um, to cut an angle. I usually, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing something like the box, you would use the, the quarter angle. But in this case, I'm going to use this one over here because I want to have a little bit, so they don't fit together like this, but they fit together like this. So you cut, in this case, you cut it on the inside in both pieces. So I'm going along. Just be careful you got the right one because sometimes I screw up. And then this one. And if you don't have one of these tools, you can just use a knife. So you just want to get it at a bit of an angle. Okay, and just make sure you keep your sides together so you know which is the top and which is the bottom. Okay. So of course it doesn't matter when you're putting it together, you just want them to match so that the wide part matches together like that. Okay. Alright, so let's put this together because we want it to dry out a bit. Where's my slip? Here it is. And we can work on one half and then the other half. And that should do it. So. I'm going to take some slip. Now, actually, why don't I brush it on? So I'm going to put a little slip on there. Score. Slip and score. The other side. Okay. I've done these when they're like 
Um, these are pretty floppy, and I think it's actually easier to do it when it's a little floppy. If they're too stiff, um, then it's hard to do the bending in the next step. Okay, so we're going to put them together on one side, and you'll see now it's pretty flat looking. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so we'll put one side together, and then the other side. So you can see I'm just going to pinch it closed to start. that. Oops! <laughs> Went to check the camera and knocked it over. Okay. And then the other side. Now, that's way too flat, right? We don't want to leave it like that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, you can use anything that, you know, is like a long tool that you can get in and just push out a little bit. Be careful of your sides because we haven't really secured them yet. But And I, we'll be doing more of this later, but I just want to get a little bit so that it will stand a little bit better. So we puff it out. So we're basically stretching out the wall a little. And just pushing. And that, I often just end up splitting the sides a little, so you have to be careful. This is pretty soft though, so it seems to be sticking. So, whoops. There, and now I split the side. Okay. And you kind of have to do it from both ends. This is the bottom half. But I'm going to just puff it out a little bit. And it helps me to use my hand as a, to go against so that I don't, so I'm holding the piece up a bit and just pushing against it. But again, I've got this section over here. So let's take a roller. And I'm just going to roll the sides a little. Try to make it a little bit more of a good seal. And this side. It's a little wonky now, but we'll play with it some more to get it more in the shape that we want. All right, so. The primary thing is you want to get the bottom to be the way you want it to look because we're going to attach a piece to that. And something is not quite right. Let's see. That was what was not quite right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for a little bit while we attach the top so that it has a little chance to sort of meld together and dry. So we're going to do the same thing with the top half. I'm going to take my finger along the edges Oh, right, I, now I want to cut out the angle of the top. So you can leave it like this and have just a straight top. And I made the template flexible by not having a cutout so I could change it up if I wanted to. I could do like an uneven top if I wanted or a curve like I'm going to do today. An uneven top would be fun too, you know, where you just sort of cut one of my hairs. Um, like a, uh, whoa, they don't even have to match. You know, you could just cut at an ang at whatever pattern you wanted at the top. So we just want to make sure we're at the top. This is the bottom. That's the top. Okay. So I'm going to just cut one of them and then use it as a template for the other one. And yes, I'm just going to wing it. So leave a little extra clay at the top so that you have a place to join with. So, you, so I didn't start cutting at the very center. So now I'm just going to take this little piece and I'm going to place it here. <laughs> so narrow I couldn't even tell where it was. No, that's upside down. Which way do I want this? Why am I confused? I want it like this. Okay. So straight edge. And then just use it. Sorry about my hand, but you get the idea. And you know, you can play with it a little bit afterwards because I didn't cut them quite even. But now we have two um, 
edges. And then I'm going to take my cutting tool and using the same angle, I'm going to cut here. this side and I don't think I left quite enough clay at the top but it'll be okay because the good thing is it's clay and you can just you can change it a little bit your design or whatever so now I'm gonna just smooth oh I think I might have forgot to do that on the other one when I attached I'm just gonna smooth the edge there and here since we cut it I'm gonna smooth it a little bit here too all right, so that's just to kind of thicken it a little where the join is going to be. Okay, and now we're going to slip and score, same as we did with the other one. We'll slip, score. attach these. So with the angle it's a little bit more let's pinch that a little before we connect the other side. Okay. And then now attach this thing. And again, it's almost flat, and we're going to puff it out some. But just make sure we have a good, okay. Take my roller. And I am going to work on the inside seam a little bit, too. And just these are pretty soft. And, okay. Puff that out a little. I didn't mess that up. Good. Okay. And that's the top half. And that will fit on the other piece, which I'll show you in a bit. All right, so let's go back to the bottom half. Um, I'm going to take a, um, where is that, rubber tip tool. And I'm going to just go along the inside seam a little. Let's try and seal it up. And then I'm going to add the base because that'll just make it easier. It'll hold it together better once we have a base. So just make sure you have the shape that you want for the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. Just a little bowed out. Right. And maybe we'll use this piece that's got all the lines on it. That might be fun. But first I need my stamp over here so this is a good time to put your stamp on half the time I forget or if you use a stamp so I'm going to use my name stamp and I'm just gonna put it in there and it's flat so that's cool and then I'm going to put some slip on here and put this on here just to get a mark of where it is peel it off now we have a line. I can follow that line and cut out. I just cut out sort of just a little along the outside edge of that. And if you can remember what you did, which I think it was like that, there's the piece. Okay, so now we'll slip both of them. And score. Okay, put that piece on. And 
kind of wiggle it a little so that it's secure. Okay. And you can see there's like a little tiny bit of overlap, but not a lot of clay or excess of clay. So now I take my roller and I gently, because this is not all that um, stiff yet, and I just roll the edges. Here, let's see if we can do it from this side. So you can see, I go over and down. So it just makes a little overlap. It makes a little lip because I'm sort of thinning it out when I roll it. Just a tiny bit. Okay. And then I like to just press this in a little so that I have like a little indent as if there were a foot. And we can play with this a little bit more. You know, you can do a little so you get more of an angle to the foot. Okay, so now this will hold itself together a little bit better. And we can take let that go. We can take this and do a little bit more shaping. So like I want to do a little bit out here. Now you still need to be careful. It's still possible to split this open. So but of course you can always stick it back together again. And you know, you could leave it flat or you could boof it out as much as you wanted. You just need to make sure you have enough clay to do that and that you don't split it open. Right. So, let's see. Okay. And you can even do a little bit more after the whole thing is put together. But I like to do some now because it's easier to see and to get in there. Unless you have a really long stick, which I don't. So, okay, so that's, that's pretty good. That's kind of boofed out, you can see. Now, one side's a little more boofy than the other, so maybe I'll just do a little more on this side. Okay, and of course I split it. So what I like to do is just add a little bit more slip and just squeeze it back together. Oh, and I think I did not do the seam on these, so let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to take my tool, my rubber tip tool, and just go along the inside. Okay. Yeah, see, I got this little, like, dent at the bottom. I just kind of want to get out of there. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. Without splitting it, I hope. Yeah. Okay. So now we have a top and a bottom, and we want to look and see how does this fit. Well, it doesn't. And that's because I stretched the bottom out, but I haven't stretched the top out yet. So I'm going to take my tool again, and I'm going to do some... This is easier because you can do it with your hand at and I'm going to stretch this out a little. Until I get it to fit. <laughs> okay, a little bit more. So that's the advantage of doing it with softer clay because it's easier to stretch it. The clay that's harder, it can be a little bit more difficult to stretch. There we go. Now we have a fit. Cool. So again, we're going to score and slip. So now it's going to be on the here. Oh, got a little slip. Along the inside edge, and on this side, I mean the top edge. And then on the inside of this one. Okay, and then I take it, place the top over the bottom, and you can't really press, if, you know, easily 
well, make sure it's in the right spot. I mean, you can't just press it without some support. So I take my wooden tool and I press it out towards my hand. Okay. And the trick of these lines is it's easy to break it so you got to be careful with that all right so one thing I've <laughs> realized is if I peek inside and I see any light then I don't have a good then it's not you know a good from the inside and then the other thing I'm going to do is using my rubber tip tool I'm going to make sure I have a good seal on the outside outside and now the very last well you can I shouldn't say very last part because are we ever really done is uh, I like to play with this part a little bit and I might look to see did I cut them evenly I could take my knife and I could just go along it like this it's a little soft still but get them a little bit more even and you have to be careful with this texture because it's easy to break. Um, and then you want to, you know, smooth your rim or maybe there's something you want to do to it. You could add to it. Um, I don't know, it all depends what you want to do. You could put little lugs somewhere on the side. I, I kind of just like it like this because I feel, think the whole thing is so busy as it is. Whoops. And then the last part, and this you can do today and then you can do it you know, when it's dried up a little bit more set up is um, puff it out as much as you want to puff it out. Just be careful not to go too far and to not um, not split those seams because that's the worst part. Um, let's see. So, and you can do it top and bottom, right? You know, if you want to do this up a little bit more here, you want to widen the top. Just be careful because this, like in my case, it's drying a little bit. So it's a little stiffer. And you could take a sponge to here, smooth it out some, or a chamois or something. But that's uh, that's how I'm making these two-sided vases. So here you can see what it looks like. Kind of all puffed out. So there you go. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.